what if Burmese pythons aren't as bad as you might think? Before you blow up on me in the comment section, let me explain. All right, one of the biggest things that is a problem with Burmese pythons being in the Everglades is that they're eating all of the native animals that are there, especially small mammals like raccoons, possums, rabbits, foxes, anything small. This is non-controversial. This is something that is happening. When raccoons and all these other animals live in urban environments, we literally call them trash pandas because they go through our garbage. They eat whatever scraps they can find. But what do raccoons and other animals like that eat when they're in the wild? Well, the long story short is raccoons eat anything they can manage to get in their mouths, and so do possums. Um, they love raiding nests and they love reptile eggs or well, any sort of eggs. But due to the fact that animals like raccoons have been able to proliferate so much because they adapt so well to an urbanized environment, this also goes for animals like coyotes and peregrine falcons and pigeons. They just do well around people. So their numbers are a lot higher around population centers than they would be even in the wild. And the Everglades is a huge place. And you see, Miami is right on the other side of it. Above it, all of this is farmland and urbanized area. Raccoons are a nonstop conveyor belt. And on all the articles I could find, there are only a few that talk about this. They always just talk about the decline in the raccoon small animal populations. But I genuinely believe that over the years, because of the urbanization, that animals like raccoons have had a boost in population. So basically, the populations are higher than they would normally be in the wild due to the fact that, well, frankly, humans help them out. So they are able to outcompete animals like alligators and turtles and crocodiles, American crocodiles, because there are more raccoons now that are raiding and eating their eggs. You might see these numbers all over the place, and I'm not necessarily denying that these are accurate numbers. How many of you who are still here watching this have ever actually been to the Everglades? Most of you probably not. And there are plenty of people who have been there a lot more than I have. But I've been there like six times this year. Every single time I'm there, I see rabbits and possums and raccoons every single time. And this came out in like 2012, these numbers. You're telling me in 11 years, 100% of rabbit decline has gone down even more? I've seen, I see them all the time. My point with that being, I'm not necessarily sure that these studies are very accurate. And over the past few years, animals like the American crocodile have had drastic increases in populations, now to the point that instead of endangered, the American crocodile is now considered threatened, which is a step up, that's good. Not saying that other things aren't to blame for this, but if the Burmese pythons are eating a lot of these animals, that would raid their nests and make it harder for them to reproduce. It's a leg up for them. And if there was no food in the Everglades left, like no small animals, how are the alligator populations and the American crocodile populations doing so well? Because yes, these guys both eat fish, but they also eat a ton of raccoons and possums and all these other small animals. And they also eat Burmese pythons. Am I right on this? I don't know. I can tell you what, I've probably been the Everglades more than you have for those who are like, well, the study show. And a lot of these studies just don't really make too much sense to me. But again, that's one of the reasons I'm going back to school to study wildlife conservation is because I want to know these answers. I want to know that I'm not just spewing this out with no merit. Nature is not solely something that we can control. It's a balance, it's an equilibrium. And in many places that equilibrium has already been destroyed and shifted due to us. The biggest animals are the ones that tend to be harmed the most by change. And medium generalist animals tend to adapt the quickest. And medium animals like the raccoons and possums have adapted to be able to live with us. And thus their numbers have exploded and have thrown off the balance for everything else as well. This does not mean that I think nothing should be done about the Burmese pythons because I think that that needs to be under control and if they were all out of there, that would be a good thing. So most of you guys have probably gone by now and think, Dean thinks, or Dean supports leaving all the Burmese pythons in the Everglades. No, I don't. But maybe, just maybe, 
it's a very nuanced situation and it's not entirely a bad thing that this has happened do we get rid of all the burmese pythons most likely no they're probably here to stay are the animals going to adapt to their new predator and potentially prey probably some might not make it that's honestly just the way it goes and it sucks that it happened this way let me know what you think in the comments down below and if you think i'm way off base here please let me know i look forward to those who want to tell me how wrong i am but i think you're wrong <laughs>